Okay, here we go. This is lesson four of module one, and this is video one. So um, today we are looking at estimation. All right, and we're going to um, work on estimating using powers of 10 and their multiples because we have been working on powers of 10, right? So um, solving real world and mathematical problems that involve addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of multi-digit whole numbers, as well as the effects of multiplying and dividing whole numbers by the power of 10. All right, so here you see we have a problem on our board, 28 times 79. We can calculate it using paper and pencil, sure. We can estimate the product using mental math. Why might we estimate the product before we calculate it? Anybody have an idea why we would estimate it before we could calculate it? Think about that. Yeah, well, we might want to make sure that we get the correct answer. Right? We want to kind of um, check it and make sure it's reasonable. Okay, um, We can estimate a problem, a product, by rounding the factors and then multiplying them. How would you round 28 and 79 so you can use mental math to estimate the product? How could we round these two? Let's see if I can find my pens here. There they are. Okay. So hopefully you're thinking and not just watching me like a TV, right? You're thinking. Um, we could round them both to the number of ten, the nearest 10, right? So 28 to the nearest 10 would be 30, right? Because the 8 is much closer to 30 than it is to 20. And 79 also much closer to 80 than it is to 70. Okay, and then we could multiply the two of those together. Now, what is 30 times 80? We could think of it as 3 times 10, right? Because 30 is 3 times 10 times 8 times 10, right? And then you could take these two tens and say, well, that's 10 to the second power, right? Remember exponents, yeah? And 3 times 8 is 24, okay? And 10 to the second power is the same as 100. 10 times 10 is 100. So now we have 24 times 100, which would be 24 times 1. And this is an estimate. So 24 times 1 is 24. And 24 times 100 is 2400 or 2400. OK, do you see that? Because we have the commutative, commutative property of multiplication. So we can switch them the order around, right, when we multiply. We also have the associative property of multiplication, which means we can group things in different ways. So you see how we put 10 times 10 together in one group and 3 times 8 in another group, right? 3 times 8 is in another group. OK, that's the associative property. All right, very good. Um, do you think that this estimate, 2,400, is greater than or less than than the actual product of 28 times 79? You notice that we rounded this one up to 30 and we rounded this one up to 80. So 2,400 is a little bit more than the actual um, multiplication. The actual multiplication would be 2,000. 112. But 2,400 is a very close estimate to that actual product, right? Okay, fabulous. Thank you for following along closely. Let me see. I think I need to shrink it a little bit and clear that screen. And let's see if it will let me go. There we go. And we can probably... All right, so now our next number you can see it's 200, 278 times 31. Let me grab a pen here. Okay, 278 times 31. 
All right, so how can we estimate this product? Right, same thing that we were thinking about before. We can round 278. Okay, so we could round it to the nearest hundred, right? If we look at the seven, the seven tells the two next door that it's going to go up to 300 because seven is above five and closer to 300 than it is to 200, right? And then we could also round this to the nearest 10. Now I know some of you did a lot of estimating work before and you want to know, am I rounding to the nearest 10? Am I rounding to the nearest 100? We're rounding to what is necessary to help us estimate. Okay, so um, we could do 300 times three, right? So we have three times three and that is nine. And then we have three zeros. You see our three zeros? So that's 9,000. Okay, and if you want to think of that as 3 times 100 times 3 times 10, if that helps you, and then you can see that our 10 times 100 is 1,000, and our 3 times 3 is 9, so that would be 9 times 1,000, which is the same as 9,000, okay? There's sometimes other ways to do it, right? It kind of depends on how you're thinking about numbers, what your number skills are. What if we did um, 31 times 300? Could you do that? Keep the 31, that would make it a little bit closer, right? Could we do that? Some people can think about how three times 30 is 90, and 3 times 1 is 3, so that's 93, right? So think about it this way, if you had 31 times 3, right, that would be 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 3 is 9, that's 93, okay? And then we have our two zeros, so that would be 9,300. Okay, if you're not there yet, that's okay. I'm just showing you some other things that you might be thinking about. All right, now, do we think that our estimate is greater than or less than the actual product? All right, well, here we rounded the, this one up, but we rounded this one down, right? Here, we didn't round this one at all, but we rounded this one up. So this one is probably greater right? And this one might be less than, right? Okay, well, the actual answer is 8,618. So both of them are greater, okay? But they are both also close estimates. 9,000 and 9,300 is close to 8,618, right? Okay. All right. Remember, if you um, need to think about it a little bit more, you can pause the video and think about it more. Okay. Um, let's see. Our next question is 308 times 24. Okay. 308 times 24. Now let's think about this a little bit. Think about what you would do, okay? Maybe you would change the 308 to a 300, right? Because this is a zero, so that tells us that we're very close to 300, right? And maybe change our 24 to 20, okay? I think that's probably the easiest, round both of them, this one to the closest 100, this one to the closest 10, okay? What if we kept our 300 instead of 300 and changed it to 310? We round it to the closest 10 because the eight here could go up to 10, right? 
we could do 310 times 20. That might be something some of you could do, right? Or what if we did 300 and instead of 20, we rounded it to 25, right? Just rounded this one up to the next um, five, okay? Let's just look at all of those, okay? So here we have three times two, which is six. And then we can just bring all three zeros over. Do you see the three zeros? Two zeros on one and one more zero. So that would be 6,000, right? Okay, not a bad estimate. 310, we could take 31 times two, right? So remember how we did that with the 93? We could think about our 31 and two. So that would be 62, right? Some of you are able to think about that. 62 and two zeros. See our two zeros here. Okay. Or we could do three times 25. Think about having three quarters. Three quarters is 75 cents, right? Three times 25 and then our two zeros. Okay. So that would be 7,500. Now, do we think our estimates are less than or greater than the actual answer? Okay, let's look at each of them. These two we both rounded down. So these are probably less than the actual answer, right? Okay, let's look at these two. This one we rounded up, this one we rounded down. So this one might be not sure, right? Okay. This one we rounded down, but this one we rounded up. So that one might be greater than it. it's bigger than our other two, right? Okay, and the actual answer is 7,392. All right. So this one is actually the closest, but they're all very close, right? Okay, so when we round factors differently, then it can be difficult to know, right? We have to look at the different factors. What matters most is that you're thinking about your rounding, you're making thoughtful choices, and you're able to notice if it's gonna be close to the actual product, because if you did the math and your actual product came out to something like this, then you wanna go back and check your math and check your estimate and see where you made a mistake, okay? We'll stop there and I will see you in video number two. Thanks so much. Aloha.